Hey guys, welcome back to Preview Alliance Podcast. It's Sarah. And Whitney. Okay. So we are having um, a lot of our Previa women um, bring up topics of pregnancy issues. Yay. And so it's a perfect yep. time to hit on pregnancy stuff. Uh, we talk a lot of postpartum, but guess what? Mental health is important in pregnancy and postpartum. That's right. Mm-hmm. So the title of this episode, It's Okay to Say You Don't Like Being Pregnant. Well, because it's not easy. No. It is not easy. No. Let's normalize we don't love the process. No. And we even if you have a really good, uncomplicated, for the most part, pregnancy, yeah. you're still going to have discomfort. And you can still be grateful mm-hmm. for what your body's doing. Oh, absolutely. For the baby. Yeah. But let's be honest, like, it, you could say, in this moment, I don't like feeling like I have to throw up every five minutes. Oh, yeah. Or, or pee every five minutes. Yeah. Or the fun part of, okay, I'm nauseous if I eat, but if I don't eat soon enough, I'm even more nauseated. Or That's then, always the fun game. Or then when I do eat, I have heartburn yep. all night long, mm-hmm. and I'm like a breathing fiery dragon, Uh huh. Yeah. and I'm propping myself on pillows, and I'm not sleeping. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like moms are shamed mm-hmm. when they share the heart of pregnancy, yep. and that adds more to shame, guilt, anxiety. Oh, yeah. Doom. Well, and I will say, like, first trimester for me, more so I remember with my second one than I do my first because I had a toddler to keep up with. Oh, diff- it, it's it, just, oh. In the fatigue of that first trimester, and it was like if I sat down, if I laid down, I was done. Done. And then I felt so guilty because pre-getting pregnant a second time, after my daughter would go to bed, that's when I would clean the house. Do whatever. Get your stuff done. Yeah. yeah. That's when I would kind of get caught up on the house. Well, then that first trimester hit again, and I felt lazy. I did, too. I felt unproductive, and I felt guilty because there my husband was picking up a lot of the slack for things that I normally did. And you felt extra whatever about that. I did. And at that time, he was working an hour and a half away from home. So I really did feel guilty because I'm like, I know know you're exhausted from driving three hours total of a commute and working an eight-hour day in a school. Yeah. It was hard. So let's unpack this. When someone is pregnant, especially for the first time, you don't really know what to expect. Let's be honest. That's true. And even if you do have had pregnancies, every pregnancy is different. Mm -hmm. You can be super sick with one. You can Mm -hmm. be not with other. It changes if you have different relationships during Mm -hmm. these pregnancies. Yeah. Different stages of your work. Mm -hmm. If you're in school. That's right. So... All pregnancy is hard in its own way. Mm-hmm. And it's not looking at saying, okay, your pregnancy is way harder than mine, Whitney's, because right. you did this and I didn't. Yeah. You can own what's happening to you. Hard is hard. Hard is hard. And it's not a competition. Thank you. And so I think you got to just put that out there. It's mm-hmm. like, what's hard to me is hard and that's valid. Yes. And I don't need anybody else to tell me, well, it shouldn't be no. hard or it isn't. Well, that's like comparing griefs. Oh. You know what I mean? Yes. A grief is a grief. Uh-huh. We don't, it's not a competition. We don't need to try and one up somebody when it comes to grief or hard things. So it's, and that's something we got to take away Mm -hmm. is just, you can own how you feel. Yeah. We, we are allowed to feel our feelings. Feel the feels. I preach this all the time to my clients. Feelings are amoral. They are neither good nor bad. Right. They can be pleasant or unpleasant, but they are not good or bad. And they are not a definition of your character. No. And I think you, I know, speaking personally, sometimes when I feel a certain way, I'm like, why would you feel that way? Does that, like, stare at Kind of judgment yeah. on yourself. And that felt even harder in pregnancy because, and I think this is an aspect, too, I've heard a lot, You, especially if you struggle to get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And you've tried or you've had losses and now mm-hmm. you're pregnant. You're like, I should be so grateful for this. Or you've mm-hmm. dreamed of it your whole entire life. And it doesn't look like how you envisioned. Yes. And you're like, I shouldn't be thinking mm-hmm. this is like, I don't like this. Yeah. Or I want this to get gone. Or I can't wait to get yeah past this. Well, I mean, most, and I say most moms, a lot of the moms that I know, once they get to about 36, 37 weeks, they're like, okay, I'm done being pregnant. I would get done, this baby out of me. Done. I remember mm-hmm. crying to uh, my doctor being like, I deliver yeah I mean I couldn't walk 
I couldn't sleep. It's miserable. I could barely eat. Chasing after Will. Mm. I mean, to I, I felt like a beluga whale just mm. rolling around on a yeah. beach. It's hard. On a day-to-day. Getting mm-hmm. in and out, it was hot. Yeah. Mm. And everybody's like, when you do, is any day, you know. So you had those comments. Yeah. And you're like, great, I'm 30 weeks. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. I've got, you know, who knows how much more exactly. time. Two and, and a half more months. And so it's just, how do we deal with that? So how do we deal with saying, okay, to the mom that's throwing up constantly, and she's like, this cannot be my next nine months. Or the mom who's exhausted, who has the toddler, and is like, how am I going to do this? I can't mm-hmm. do this. What can they do to reframe or what can they do to support their mental health? Know that it will not last forever. This too shall pass. Uh-huh. Sometimes I have to use that mantra when my toddler has a tantrum. Amen. This too shall pass. This will not be a forever. No. You know, if it's one of those nausea throwing up, definitely reach out to your OB. See if there's a medicine that they can prescribe you for it. This is not medical advice, but I took no. Umasom and um, vitamin B12. Mm-hmm. It was That's a life, pretty common. This was a life changer for me. Mm-hmm. Um, only way I could function in the day and the only way I could really sleep at night. And here's some other just weird, um, I guess, nausea hacks. Um, rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer because it does have such a high quantity of alcohol yeah. in it. Just even breathing that in can help with nausea sometimes. Yeah. Peppermint essential oil, just breathing that in sometimes can ginger. help. Ginger. They had like these, mm-hmm. um, it's like happy tummy or something like that, that ginger yes. things that you could kind of suck on. The that really pops. helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but it's, Throwing up constantly is miserable. miserable and it's so hard and Mm -hmm. no one, like no one should expect you to be like grateful, happy and like living your best life during that. No. And you shouldn't expect that of yourself. And that's the thing. So I would say part of it is reframing to realistic expectations. Yeah. Because when you feel horrible, when you're laid out on the bathroom floor, you can say, I feel horrible. I don't like this. I want this part of pregnancy to pass. Right. But I am still grateful for my pregnancy. And what do you say when people are giving you like, oh, you should be grateful. Or, you know, at least you can't, at least you're pregnant. You know, so-and-so was, I tried to get pregnant. I could, you know, whatever. That they love to put on. Yeah. Everybody, I feel like once you're pregnant or you have a new baby, everybody wants to tell you how, how you feel. should feel. Well, here in... I just said this, you know, a couple of episodes ago where I don't love how the hormones get to be the scapegoat. This is one time I will tell you to kind of use your hormones as the scapegoat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Just say, you know what? I am grateful for my child, but I would really be grateful for some sleep too. Yeah. Brenda. Yeah. Yes, Aunt Just Brenda. Saying. You probably weren't living in the life we are currently. You were back in, you know, the Oregon Trail days here, Aunt Brenda. <laughs> I love you know, it. things have changed. Yes. But also you can say, I'm grateful for my pregnancy, but I've also lost 15 pounds because I have hyperemesis gravita. I've been in the hospital a minute for fluids. Exactly. It's not easy. It is hard on us. Or I just, you know, the only nap I get is when my toddler naps. And guess what? They'll probably stop napping during that time because that's just life. Well, of course. Right? It's like, why would they not? I mean, that's just what life does to us. And let's talk about the the type A's or ones. Who okay, feel good. accomplished. That would be me. When they do tasks. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now you can't do our tasks that make us feel so accomplished. Yeah. Or on the timeline that we put on ourselves. Or mm-hmm. we don't need to ask for help because we could do this. Mm-hmm. And now we kind of ask for help. Mm-hmm. Even when our husbands drive an hour and a half. Yeah. How do we handle that? So part of it, again, normalize that asking for help is a good thing to do. It's not a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of weakness. Everybody needs help at some point. And, you know, in your mind, trade places with your best friend. If your best friend is where you are now, would you be mad or upset if they asked you for help? No. You would be like, girl, why'd you not call me? Exactly. I got you. Yeah. Especially if they've had kids. Yes. So, and I have those friends where we've had kids, not even necessarily in the same, you know, time frames, but we've all had kids and it's one of those, we reach out to the other one of, are you okay? What do you need? Can I Venmo you money for DoorDash? Or, you know, if they're close enough by, hey, I'm going to go get you lunch today. Do you want Chick-fil-A or do you want Tzatziki's or, you know, whatever it is. And you don't really give them the option of saying, no, thank you. You just say, what you do you just want? You just say, what do you want? I can be by around 12 o'clock. 
I can do a porch drop off, or if you need me to handle a couple of things for you, I can do that before I go get the kids from school. Yeah. And I think I took it so hard. I, st- I took it in postpartum hard, too, is yeah. when I couldn't do what I normally used to do. Mm-hmm. And there's limitations when you're growing a human and you've just delivered a human. Yep. And it's not how you feel, your fatigue, your yep. body changing. And that's hard. Yeah. And you may not have felt those limitations on yourself before. Mm-hmm. So this is definitely not maternal mental health related. But years ago when I had knee surgery, obviously that was a huge limitation. Yeah. I had to learn how to walk again with yeah. that leg. And that was extremely hard for me because I had to ask for help because I, I, I couldn't walk. Yeah. Um, at least not without my crutches. And if you have crutches, guess what? You don't have free hands. Yeah. And so I had to ask for help. Yeah. And it was a few weeks before I graduated off of, you know, my crutches or graduated from two to one crutch. Yeah. That kind of thing. And so I had to say, you know what, now is a time in my life where I need extra. That's okay. And I'm not a bad person. No. And you're not a bad person. You're not a bad mom if you ask for help. No. And it's so, and I know when I was nursing pregnant, um, my coworkers were great. Yeah. And they, they realized Mm -hmm. it wasn't like. You know, they weren't judging me and saying yeah. like, oh, Sarah, I can't do this today. Yeah. I mean, there was literally patients that as I, I was pregnant, I could not take care of mm-hmm. because there was things they had that I could not be Correct. exposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that and was, I would assume at some point too, physically, like you couldn't perform CPR. No, no. And it's because you get that belly so big. Mm-hmm. And so it's a phase and I had to, and they knew that and yeah. I knew that. Mm-hmm. And so you just got to change your mental look at like reframing reframe it and don't dwell and don't keep going down this yeah because dwelling on it's not going to change it no what's going to change it is how you approach it Mm -hmm. so reframe validate your feelings yeah they're legit i threw up for the 20th time today and that sucks that sucks i can't fit into any of my clothes Mm -hmm. i want it's one of those how have i lost 15 pounds but i still can't fit into my jeans I've went to the bathroom more times than I have drank water today. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to go out and I want to go have a drink with my friends. I can't. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired now. Mm -hmm. I need to go home after work instead of maybe taking that workout class that used to be my time. Uh Uh-huh. Process it. Voice journal. Yes. Have someone in the same phase of life with you. Yeah. Or close to it. Close to it. Or someone who's been there. Yeah. And say, hey, Whitney, this Have that level of empathy. now. You know, yeah. and I don't think partners for the most part really get it. It's hard because especially it's men. It's not their body. Exactly. Men can't be pregnant. They're not going to experience those hormone shifts. Yeah. They're just not. And so they can be supportive and they can be empathetic. Can they fully understand how hard it is and all the different facets that come into it? No. And that's, again, that's not a character flaw for them. It's just reality. It is. So that's why you need to hear it from another mom who's yeah. been there and say, yeah, we, we're with you. Absolutely. If you're in there and you're pregnant, you're like, I don't like this right now. Yeah. Hey, we've had those moments. Yeah, this is not enjoyable. No. And you have a right to say that, but you love that child. Mm-hmm. You're grateful for that child. Yep. And it does not think you're a bad mom. Yeah. Or exactly. you're going to be a bad mom. Oh, yeah. So let's just go ahead and we'll end it with this. It's okay to say you don't like being pregnant because of what comes along with it. That's right. Pregnancy is hard uh mentally and physically. We can be grateful for the pregnancy, but hate this stage that we're in of pregnancy. Because for me, the first trimester was way harder than the second. Just for me, personally. The the throwing up, the mind fog, the fatigue, Mm -hmm. for sure in the first trimester. And waking up every day, being like already nauseous in the morning that was not a good way to start my day no now did i i had to sometimes say nausea means i'm yes i'm doing good my hormones my hormones are doing what they're supposed to do because i had had losses and so to me Mm -hmm. i also got like a different perspective is i would if i wouldn't feel nauseous yeah i would get like anxious and be like is something wrong Uh uh-huh because so it was like I was both ways. Yeah. I was like upset if I was throwing up and I was upset if I wasn't feeling nauseous. And I remember Bill being like, 
which way is it? And I'm yeah. like, I don't know which way it is. It's everything. I, I remember so vividly with my first pregnancy, I had tons of food aversions with her. Tons. Basil I mean, was mine. I could smell basil from across the street and be like, get it away. Oh, wow. Mine was, I pretty much lived off grilled cheese and macaroni and cheese and fruit. All people eat is carbs here. Like that's, I'm like, and that's it's a okay. bread, bring it if to you, me. If you get it down and keep it down, that's a winner. Uh-huh. And I just remember when I was pregnant with my oldest, one day I was working at the hospital and I went over to the cafeteria oh. and I made a salad and I ate it and I didn't get nauseous and I panicked because I thought, this is the first salad I've had in three months. Why am I able to eat it? And it was because I was probably about 14, 15 weeks. So I was getting out of that first trimester yuckiness. I see we all feel it. We're just like, why? Yeah. What's it? You know. Why has this all of a sudden changed yeah. today? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And everything was fine. She's nearly six years old and she is fine. But that freaked me out. It, I remember that uh-huh. vividly. Or when you just start getting that energy back in the second trimester. Yeah. And you feel like yourself. Oh, man. But it could be a little too early to feel the baby kick. And especially if it's your yes. first pregnancy until you really figure out how to know it's mm-hmm. kicked. Or if you have an anterior placenta. Uh, so all throughout pregnancy, there's like these, you know, from nausea, fatigue to like getting that second trimester yeah. feel good. But some, some of our moms don't if they constantly are sick. And yeah. then the third trimester where you're just done and your yeah. body's done, all of it's valid. Yeah. Voice it journal. Is. If you can go for a walk and just let it out listen to something positive absolutely talk to people who get it who've been there yeah know this too shall pass it will reframe your thoughts Mm -hmm. it is hard today it will not always be this hard exactly it will not always be to this severity but you know what it's we're gonna say it for you it's okay not to enjoy pregnancy absolutely not every part of pregnancy and ain't brenda take a seat Mm, aunt brenda and you know what just ignore it that's right. Or get sassy back up once in a while. I mean, you know, blame your hormones. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of that being the scapegoat. But, but some, we can on Aunt Brenda right now. I was about to say, but sometimes we have to use things to our advantage just yeah. to get people off our backs. And that's fine. Yep. You guys, we're in it with you. That's right. Till next time. See ya.